Hey everyone, Guardian E here with another live reaction and first impression video for Fire Emblem Heroes. And tonight we are getting the reveal of the next set of new heroes to get dropped into the regular pool in just a few short days. Now traditionally around this time, and I'm pretty confident, we are going to be getting a Fallen Heroes banner that has been the modus operandi for the past couple of years, so I suspect that will continue today. And as for the candidates... I don't really know. I mean, I feel like they could they could actually go for like an evil Edelgard or evil three heroes banner. They've been on a three heroes kick lately. Who knows if that'll continue? They might try to change things up. So I don't know. Let's just go ahead, watch the trailer together for the first time um, and and hit play here. See, see who uh, who's going to get the evil makeover. It's always cool when they bring out the, the edgy designs. New heroes join the battle and... Oh, what? Okay, all right. Hey, called it. Savage Boar, it is going to be Dark Dimitri. He looks cool. The art's really nice. Gotta love the little the little flames around her. Murder, around him. Murderous Lion is the B-slot. <laughs> okay. Dimitri Emblem alive and well. Faded Darkness. Is this, who is that? Is that Morgan? Oh, it is Morgan. Okay. Interesting. Tome of Despair. Attack Res Menace. I'm interested to see what that's all about. Uh, nice animation. Yeah, that is pretty nice. Oh, interesting. Both Morgans. She's going to be a flying axe unit? Huh. Did not expect that. Non-inheritable, acts of despair. Di she's going to have dive bomb. She's also going to have a menace skill. So it seems like the menace skills are going to be kind of thematically what uh, gets brought to the... Uh, and we are going to get Dark Edelgard. Wow, look at... Look at how half of her is, like, twisted into this... Oh, wow, that's so cool. Twin Crest Power, uh, Attack Defense Ideal, Armored Wall for the B-slot, Armored Stride. Oh, whoa! That is really cool looking. Uh, Bound Elsewhere, New Story Chapter? Okay, so kind of what I was expecting, except sort of a twist. Uh, anything here? Alright, nothing here of particular note as far as freebie units or reveals, so... So starting on the 7th of May, there is not going to be a 4-star focus unit on this banner. Uh, but there is going to be a sparking on the banner, so that is nice. I mean, there's no... Oh, wait! Wait, in addition to a free focus hero... Oh, are they just gonna... Oh, they're just gonna talk about these... The currency. I don't know why this belongs in a trailer. That's the standard for every single new hero banner, but whatever. That's fine. Okay, well, they kind of faked me out there. I thought there was going to be like something else, something else like hugely revealed, uh, but no. Uh, seems like pretty standard fare, except for the fact that we don't get a four star focus unit on the banner, which they have been doing regularly. I mean, I guess. I guess the Dark Hero banner has always been a little unique and has its own idiosyncrasies, so I guess it's not terribly surprising. I am surprised to see both Morgans on this banner. I don't know, that, that seems seems kind of unusual to me. Um, and no Claude. Now, of course, I, there's no like evil Claude or dark Claude, I guess. I, I, Claude doesn't really have the, this dark turn that either of the other two heroes um, or house leaders can, can certainly take. But it, I think it'd be pretty cool to see a dark version of Claude. I mean, I think that would have been that would have rounded out the, uh, the banner. But then again, I, I think they probably wanted a more even split of of title representation on the banner. It does seem like the new Edelgard is going to be a colorless unit, so a little bit more color diversity as far as Edelgard emblem is concerned. Dimitri is still brandishing his lance, so that is very specifically and exclusively blue as far as Dimitri emblem is concerned. But I will say, regardless of how one might feel about the picks, I think the art itself is pretty gorgeous, especially Edelgard's was incredibly striking. So uh, let's go back, take a closer look at the characters, at their skills, to see if I think this is ultimately a banner that's worth summoning for. Forces of Will. Alright, so here he is. The Savage, the savage Boar. 
So here is Dimitri. He is going to be an infantry lance user. Not even really mixing up the movement types all too much. Uh, so, again, there is going to be some overlap with the existing Dimitris in the game. Um, his art looks good. It looks solid for sure. I think stylistically it looks great. Love the purple haze that's around him. Love the billowing purple cape. The, the overall dark design, the black and white of the fur lining of his armor. My only real gripe might be that th maybe they didn't take it far enough. I mean, especially when we see Edelgard's down the line in this trailer. All of the Dimitris kind of look really, really similar. And of course, they're all Dimitri. But at the same time, this is kind of their opportunity to go kind of crazy with the design. I certainly think the art looks solid. I just think they could have gone the extra mile here as far as like in a crazy direction, um, at least with this this dark version of him. Uh, let's keep going and see what skills he has. So we've got Vengeful Lance, which is his own unique weapon, non-inheritable. It's going to be 16 Might. Grants attack plus 3 if unit is not adjacent to an ally. Grants attack speed plus 60 unit during combat. And also, if unit's attack is greater than foe's, def oh, greater than foe's defense during combat and unit cannot make a follow-up attack, deals damage equal to 50% of unit's attack minus foe's defense. Oh. All right, so the attack plus 3, that's always solid. Um, he's going to have kind of a built-in solo skill into his weapon. Being dark, I guess that makes sense. You know, doesn't want to play nice with the other heroes so him being by himself means that he's going to get a plus six boost to attack and speed so the next part is a kind of an unusual condition because all it really means is that he does damage so if unit's attack is greater than foe's defense so if his attack stat is greater than his foe's defense meaning that he does more than zero damage um, and he can't make a follow-up attack he gets this extra little boost of damage that's essentially um, 50% of the damage that he would have done. So I suppose foregoing the, the follow-up attack, the double attack, he just gets one powerful attack instead. A Glimmer for the special, that's fine. Attack speed solo 4, obviously that is going to synergize with Vengeful Lance. A murderous Lion for the B-slot. Ooh, I already see the Kanto. Alright, so enables Kanto remainder plus 1. If unit is not adjacent to an ally... Inflict speed defense minus three on foe during combat, and foe cannot counter attack. Really? Okay. After an attack, assist skill, or structure destruction, unit can move spaces equal to any move. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. All right. So that is really good. For those of you that don't know what Kanto remainder plus one means, that does mean that he essentially gets Kanto after he attacks and gets one additional movement space plus uh, whatever movement space he didn't use in the first initiation. So if he is sitting next to an enemy and attacks into them, he basically gets plus three Kanto uh, movement afterwards. But uh, if he goes his full range uh, and then attacks, he will at least get one Kanto at the end. That's what the remainder plus one means, that plus one. Um, but besides that, if that wasn't strong enough, um, being a so when he's solo and not adjacent to an ally, plus three to speed and defense means that he is going to double more solidly. That means he's going to do more damage. Yeah, uh, those in-combat debuffs can add up and be very deadly. And uh, Folk can't counterattack, which means that he essentially gets a, uh, a fire sweep effect on his lance when he's attacking into somebody and he's solo. Um, that's really, really strong. <laughs> that's pretty absurdly strong. I, all of those things wrapped into this one skill is pretty fantastic. And he has Odd Tempest 3 for the C slot. At sort of odd number turns, unit can move one extra space. So as I was saying, since he gets one extra space on odd number turns, that actually adds into his Kanto Remainder plus one. Um, he'll have three spaces of movement. So if he only uses two, that extra space gets added into his Remainder plus one for the Kanto. Um, yeah, I mean, that Murderous Lion skill is amazing. Uh, it's actually absolutely fantastic. The Murderous Lion just has so much great utility built into it. The Kanto, the in-combat debuff... The fire sweep effect, I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous. I think Dimitri is, is definitely a killer out here. And here is his special art. Love the glowing eye on the lance. Love the shadow that's kind of cast across his face. Um, he looks unkempt. You have the purple aura, the ghost wisps that's, that are kind of surrounding him as he's launching himself forward. There's a lot of momentum here, which I really appreciate. But again, looks like Dimitri, <laughs> which is, again, I think the only... Yeah, the only kind of quote-unquote downside. So here's the first of the Morgans, Faded Darkness, the Tome male version. So he is going to be an infantry red Tome user. And he is going to have the Tome of Despair. So it's 14 might, exclusive to him, grants attack plus 3. Uh, at start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, inflicts attack res minus 6 on foe during combat. 
and also the following effects will occur based on the value of total bonuses on unit, plus value of total penalties on foe. Okay. If it's greater than or equal to 5, foe cannot make a follow-up attack. If greater than or equal to 10, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. And if gre uh, greater than or equal to 15, inflict special cooldown charge minus 1 on foe per attack during combat. Example, if unit has an attack res plus 6 bonus and foe has an attack res minus 6 penalty, the calculated total will be 24. So that's actually a pretty interesting staggered effect of the weapon. Uh, as you reach a certain threshold of debuffs or buffs, um, you get more and more effects added on. So let's break down the weapon condition. Greater than or equal to 25% HP for Morgan um, is the requirement and condition, which is relatively easy to meet. We've seen this, we're seeing this condition a lot lately. Um, and then it flatly just inflicts the attack res minus 6 on the foe during combat. If you have at least 5, foe can't make a follow-up attack, so that reduces the enemy's ability to double. If greater than 10, um, Morgan himself will make a guaranteed follow-up attack. And if at least 15, um, adds a, basically a guard effect. So anytime the enemy attacks, they're going to get a minus one special cooldown charge. So a really deadly set of effects, and honestly a relatively easy condition to meet overall with just a little bit of planning. You just need a couple of buffs on Morgan in order to um, really have the Tome of Despair at its full potency. Um, Iceberg for the special. Attack res solo 4 if unit is not adjacent to an ally. Grants attack res plus 7 during combat. Unlike Dimitri, Morgan does not have to be solo out there on the battlefield. So um, this can easily be swapped for something else depending on the synergy of the team that you make. A Sabotage defense 3 for the B slot. At start of turn, if foe's res is great, uh, less than or equal to unit's res minus 3, and that foe is adjacent to another foe, inflicts defense minus 7 on that foe through its next action. This feels like a pretty slapped on skill. I mean, this does indicate that Morgan is probably going to have some substantial res, a pretty high res stat overall, in addition to the Iceberg and the attack res solo. Um, but at the end of the day, um, this isn't going to help him. This is going to allow him to be more of a team player because, of course, the minus 7 defense on the enemy isn't really going to help him do any more damage. Attack Res Menace for the C slot. At start of turn, inflicts Attack Res minus 6 on nearest foes within 4 spaces through their next actions and grants Attack Res plus 6 to unit for one turn. So naturally, this is the next step in the Threatened skills, and I think this makes a ton of sense. The Threatened skills' big drawback has always been that in order to activate the Threatened skills, you need to put your unit in danger range of an opponent, and, and you have to do so without the Threatened effect going into play until the next turn. And that's always been the issue with the Threatened skills. The Menace allows you to kind of safely position yourself outside of the range within four spaces. So given that modification, I can definitely see the Menace skills having a lot of use. It is going to be an activated debuff, meaning a penalty, uh, which can be negated in a lot of cases. Um, there are plenty of skills out there that negate, in, um, I should say, activated debuffs on the op opponent or penalties on the, the opponent. But, um, but definitely useful, and notice how it says nearest foes. There are multiple units within the same equidistant to Morgan. They're all going to be hit, get hit with that minus attack res 6. Naturally, this does synergize with Tome of Despair, because as long as attack res menace goes off, you are getting that calculated total of 24 and meeting all of the conditions for all of the different component pieces of the skill. So that's pretty awesome. Let's keep going here. Pretty nice. I like the Plegian garb. I like the bright red eyes. It's pretty neat. I think we also get to see his uh, special art here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So here's the iceberg. And not a ton of embellishments here. Some more purple wisps. He's obviously got his angry face on. But uh, a little more subdued, especially when comparing it to something like Dimitri's that we just looked, took a look at. So, um, But overall, nice job on the art. And that iceberg is going to do a lot of damage. And next up is the other Morgan, Devoted Darkness. I mean, that axe looks absolutely wicked. I love it. Love the purple wisps around her. Basically, the modification of armor attached and strapped to her regular default outfit, more or less, uh, along with a lot of the symbolism of Grima. Uh, I think it looks pretty great, honestly. So she is going to be a flying axe user, which is interesting. Very, very curious. Let's see what this one's going to be all about. So, Axe of Despair, it's going to be 16 Might, non-inheritable. Accelerate Special Trigger, cooldown count minus 1. So, it does have a killer slaying effect. Definitely one of the best first uh, first effects you can have. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, inflicts attack defense minus 6 on foe during combat. 
uh, and also the following effects will occur. So it's going to be very, very similar to the other Morgan, makes except in Axe form, of course, and going to be affecting the defense stat rather than the red stat. So all of that makes a lot of sense. I'm not going to rehash what we just talked about. Uh, Glimmer for the special. Attack defense solo for, uh, if unit is not adjacent to an ally, grants attack defense plus 7 during combat. Dive Bomb for the B-slot at start of turn if both units and foe's HP is greater than or equal to 80% and unit initiates combat, unit can't make a follow-up attack before foe can counterattack. So obviously a pretty devastating skill on a player phasing unit. And Attack Defense Menace for the C-slot at start of turn inflicts Attack Defense minus 6 on foe nearest foes within 4 spaces through their next actions and grants Attack Defense plus 6 to, to unit for 1 turn. So... At everything that we said with the other Morgan applies here as well. Attack Defense Menace is going to synergize perfectly with Axe of Despair. She's going to be able to get that plus, you know, that greater than or equal to 15 calculation, calculated total pretty easily or pretty handily with Attack Defense Menace. Dive Bomb is an excellent premium skill. Attack Defense Solo, she's not going to be married to that because um, none of her other skills really relies on her being a solo artist here. So... And overall, I will say that the Killer Slaying effect on Axe of Despair is better than the Attack Plus 3 that's on the other Morgans. So, you know, bearing that in mind, I think this Morgan got a little bit of a, a better hand drawn, um, all things considered. Uh, especially since the B-slot fits perfectly for her, whereas I feel like it was a little bit slapped onto the other Morgan. So let's keep going. Let's take a look at her attacking art. So yeah, pretty standard fare here. I like the glowing crimson eyes. She's stretching back, ready for a, a big wide swing with that very impressive axe that has Grima's symbol on it. Pretty cool. And here is going to be her uh, special art. It looks almost exactly the same. <laughs> I think there's maybe like a couple more wisps and she has the angry face on. So yeah, I, I think Toby could have gone a little bit further with the special art for the Morgans. They're not really that differentiated. They it, Even just like more effects or wisps or anything uh, would have... I don't know. Add, added a little bit more to it. Alright, so Hegemon Husk. This is going to be Fallen Edelgard. So I mentioned it before, but I do think this art for Edelgard is gorgeous. She is in her crimson garb. She has these glowing red eyes. Just these torrents of black and purple energy around her. And she's being just actively consumed by this evil. You have it creeping up her side. You see what almost looks like a makeshift wing being created out of it on her left. Or on our left and her right. The glowing eyes coming off of it. I just think it's very, very striking. But uh, she is going to be an armor unit. And she is going to be a beast unit. And a colorless beast unit at that. So let's take a closer look at her skills. Um, to see what she's got. Alright, so Twin Crest Power, it is going to be a 14 Might Beast Weapon, Accelerate Special Trigger, Cooldown Count minus 1, Killer Slaying Effect, of course. At start of combat, if a unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, it flakes Attack Defense minus 6 on Foe during combat, and Unit and Foe both cannot make a follow-up attack. And also, if Unit initiates combat while transformed... Grants another action to unit after combat once per turn. At start of turn, if unit is adjacent to only beast or dragon allies, or if unit is not adjacent to any ally, unit transforms. If unit transforms, grant attack plus two, and unit can counterattack regardless of foe's range. So she gets distant counter built in when she is in her beast form. All right, so let's let's break that down. Killer slaying effect is always awesome. She has a similar condition to the others in that her HP needs to be at or higher than 25%. And if that happens, she gets minus six to attack and defense on her opponent, which is pretty, again, standard for the banner. Where it gets a little spicier is that neither she nor her opponent can make a follow-up attack. So goodbye doubles, they're gone. Uh, however, if she is initiating combat while she's in beast form, she gets another action after combat, so a self-procking Gale Force, similar to her legendary version, uh, it's built into her weapons. And what that means is that when she negates that follow-up attack, she's she's disallowing herself to double, right? But because she self-activates a Gale Force or a Refresh, that just means that she can attack again uh, on the opponent, and that effectively acts as her double. And don't even get me started on the plus two attack and distant counter built into her beast form. That's pretty amazing. So, a bonfire for the special. Attack defense ideal for, 
At start of combat, if unit's HP is equal to 100%, or if bonus is active on unit, grants attack defense plus 7 to unit during combat. At start of combat, if unit's HP, if both of those are active, the bonus and the HP at 100%, grants an additional attack defense plus 2 for a total of attack defense plus 9 during combat. I think the ideal skills are solid. They certainly have their place. They're definitely potent, just require very a minor amount of planning to at least meet the base condition of the plus 7. Uh, and just a little bit further to make sure that she gets the additional plus two. Armored Wall for the B slot. So this is going to be her own unique B slot skill. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, so that's obviously going to synergize with the Twin Crest power condition as well. Special cooldown charge plus one to unit. Huh. So it grants a special cooldown charge at the start of combat. So basically before she enters combat, she's going to get an extra plus one charge to her special before even going into combat if i'm reading that right i don't think we have we had a skill that does that at all i don't think we have i mean we obviously we have some stuff like special spiral that grants special cooldown charge after combat or after a special proc or things like that i don't think we've had something that initiates or or gives a special cooldown charge plus one at the start of combat i could be wrong or i could be reading it wrong but i think that's what it says uh, inflicts special cooldown charge minus one on foe per attack during combat. So it essentially inflicts the guard effect on the enemy, preventing them from proccing their special, and restores seven HP to unit after combat. Okay, uh, during and that's going to help her maintain her health to be above or equal to the 25%. Uh, during unit's first combat in player phase or enemy phase, at start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25% while transformed, reduces damage from foe's first attack by 40%. All right, so I mean, that means that she gets, oh man, that means she gets damage reduction on both phases as long as she's in beast form uh, from the first combat, and it's 40%, that's really substantial. The equal to or above 25% HP is the common ground here, and Armored Wall is going to help her with that by providing sustain for through damage reduction and healing after combat, and as long as she has that equal to or above 25% health, She's a monster. I mean, all of these effects in play, especially when she's in her beast form, are absurd. I, there's just so much stuff going on here that she gets on both phases. At that, um, it's it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. There's a there's a lot going on here, and she is going to be colorless, which means that she doesn't have any weapon color disadvantage except for like Gron Raven tomes, of course. Which I'm always a fan Raven tomes, I should say in general. I'm already thinking about Spring Camilla Gron Ravening her. But regardless, that is pretty devastating. And then for the C slot, Armored Stride 3. At start of turn, if unit's not adjacent to an ally, uh, unit can move one extra space. Yeah, so that obviously obviates the penalty, the movement penalty that is being an armored unit. Um, and that makes her Gale Force effect with the Twin Crest power that much more deadly. Because that ultimately means that she's going to be able to traverse the map. Um, and, and it potentially attack two enemies, especially on something like Aether Raid Defense or Arena or what have you. So, so Edelgard is just like really, really decked out here. I mean, she's got a ton of stuff going for her here um, that's just extremely potent. And I, mean, I definitely don't think it is out of line to say that she is probably best of banner. Um, just just given so much stuff that she, she, uh, she offers and the way that her skills just synergize together, it's pretty remarkable. So let's take a look at her attacking art here and her transformation. I mean, that's crazy amazing. Crumble to Ash. Uh, this is obviously her special art. You can see the crazed look that she has. The decay is kind of creeping up the side of her face. You have this maelstrom of just a torrent of fire energy just like right next to her as she's getting ready to attack. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it looks pretty awesome, actually. And that... that, that that attacking art and trans uh, that attacking animation and transformation is kind of awesome so anyway new story chapter bound elsewhere uh we are getting a new a new story chapter and again starting on the 7th of march we have even color distribution across again no four star focus unit on this banner but you will be able to spark um like i, I think most of you probably know by now i think edelgard is is probably the best of banner here I think that uh, Dimitri is probably second. I'd say that female Morgan is probably third. And then male Morgan is probably bringing up the rear. I just think that both of the Morgans definitely aren't as strong as either of the two house leaders. 
and male Morgan definitely his kit does not synergize quite as neatly as female uh, female Morgans. So that's that's my assessment. I mean, I, I think quite honestly, it makes a lot of sense to spark on this banner just because they're not limited units, but getting one of these units guaranteed at the 140. Uh, if you're interested in just powerful units, meta units, popular units, just because again. Um, the three house leaders, both Dimitri and Edelgard, are certainly very, very popular. The Morgans are popular in their own right. I think they have a lot of fans out there. So I suspect there are going to be a lot of people that end up sparking on this banner. Um, that's just that's just my my way of thinking. Me personally, I'm honestly very tempted to, and I may end up very well uh, sparking on the banner. Now, something that I will caution is that this is not a, a limited seasonal banner, nor is it a mythic legendary hero banner. So you're going to have the greater part of a month to decide if you want to dive in on this banner. And so we will get reveals of other banners while this banner is live. So if there's any hesitation at all, it's never a bad thing to kind of bide your time, wait to see what else is coming down the pipeline before you end up splurging on uh, on this banner. But let me know in the comments below if you are excited for the Forces of Will banner, the, the Dark Three Houses slash Awakening banner. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching and for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really do appreciate it. Certainly hoping you're all staying safe, healthy, secure, and united out there, and wishing the very, very best for you, your family, and your friends. And until next time, let's protect those skies.